Lesson 14, Deferred and Back-to-Back -back Annuities. Today we're going to do a series of two-step problems. These problems are going to have two parts to them. In some of them, the first part is going to be a compound interest problem. We call that a deferred annuity. And in some of them, the first and the second are both going to be different types of annuities. We call those back-to-back -back annuities. Let's jump right in with a problem. You plan to retire in 21 years. You will need 25 annual payments of $30,000 with the first payment to be received in 21 years. Interest is calculated at 10% effective. And this is, of course, an approximation because interest rates won't stay the same for 46 years, but we usually pretend they will in order to do calculations. A. How much money should we set aside for our retirement? I've started this with a timeline, and I've already drawn it in. It has two parts to it. One. Let's go to 21 years when our first payment happens. And then it keeps on going until our last payment, which is going to be at 45 because that will give us 25 annual payments. One at one, one at two, all the way to 25. Today, we're going to put some money in. So let's put some money in this today. And then I'm going to circle this because this is a very key point. We're going to invest it for 21 years, and then we're going to start pulling money out. So we have two problems here. Problem one is a compound interest problem. And problem two is an annuity. It's not just any type of annuity, it's an annuity due because it starts right at the beginning at 21. And it is possible to set this up so that it starts at 20, but in this case, it seems to make more sense to start at 21. So compound interest. Let's look at our values. We start off with, I don't know how much money. I make payments of, well, nothing because it's a compound interest problem. At the end of the day, I have some money. I don't exactly know how much. Let's change this color here to make it more exciting. At the beginning of this annuity, which is exactly at 21, I have however much money I saved in the first compound interest problem. My payments, well, those are gonna be $30,000, and I'm gonna make that negative because we can see that they're coming out of our account. I'm gonna start writing 30K so I don't have to write a bunch of zeros. And our future value, well, that's gonna be zero. Unless we're told to otherwise, always assume that we have no money left at the end of one of these problems. So we have to solve these one at a time. And here, we have two unknowns here, two. And here we only have one unknown. So we're gonna start with two because we only have the one unknown. So let's start by drawing in our calculator buttons. Okay, all nicely drawn, very fast. We're gonna start with number two. So I'm gonna put a two in here. In this whole problem, our PY and CY are both one. That makes these a simple annuity because everything in sight is annual and our interest rate is 10. This annuity goes on for 25 years or 25 payments. I wanna figure out what the present value is. My payment will be $30,000 and my future value is zero. It's an annuity due, so I need to make sure that begin is turned on. I usually like to do that first. So let's turn that on here and now let's put in the rest. PY and CY are both one. Again, I always check that they both entered properly. Interest rate is 10. Present value is what I'm going to find. Did I get that 25N? Yep, I have these in the wrong order. I'm gonna go ahead and fix that because it's going to confuse me. Better. IY present value, our payment is $30,000 negative, and our future value ends up being zero. So we're gonna compute that present value, and we get 
299.542.32. What that means is the day we retire, I'm going to say we, could be you, we need to have saved a lot of money. 299.542 and 32 cents. That could be around $30,000. So let's look at saving that much. So what we're going to do now is part one of our problem. So part one, let's just scroll up to look at that, is a compound interest problem where I'm trying to figure out how much money to put in, zero payments. Begin doesn't matter. When the payment is zero dollars, it doesn't matter if I put zero dollars in my account at the beginning or the end of the year. So I can just leave that alone. We know that N is 21. Future value is 299,000. The easiest way to do this is while it's showing up on my screen, I press that negative sign, and now I just press future value, and it's stored in there. So let's go ahead and change everything. Begin doesn't matter, so I'm going to leave it. PYCY should stay the same. N is now 21. Our interest rate, recall IY is still 10. Our payment is zero, that's an important one. Remember, our future value has changed, so let's compute that present value, and we find out that we need to invest $40,000, $477.32 right now. If we do that, we put $40,000 in today, we will have enough so that we can have $30,000 a year for 25 years. So 30,000 per year. That is great.